Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be reading you the book, The Seed of Compassion, written by His Holiness, the Dalai Lama. Before I read the story to you, I want to share some information that I think will help you understand the story better and enjoy the story more. The first question you might have is, who is the Dalai Lama? If you've ever been in my class and noticed this poster, that's the Dalai Lama. He's the spiritual leader of Buddhist people. If you've never met a Buddhist, I'm not surprised. They make up less than 6% of the world's total population. If you're interested in learning more about the Buddhist religion, I'm going to leave a link in the description box below to a kid-friendly resource that tells a little about the history of Buddhism, as well as some of the beliefs and values that Buddhist people have. The Dalai Lama was born in Tibet, which is located between the People's Republic of China and India. I'm going to put a map up on the screen so you can get an idea of where Tibet is located. Let's talk a little about the title, The Seed of Compassion. The word compassion refers to your ability to feel sympathy or concern for the suffering of others. So for example, if you were playing on the playground and your friend fell down and hurt themselves, you might feel bad, even though you are not the person who fell and hurt yourself. That means you have compassion. You feel sympathy for the suffering of another person. In this book, the Dalai Lama is going to be sharing some stories about his childhood. He's going to tell us about how he became the Dalai Lama. And he's also going to give us some advice about how we can become more compassionate people. I love this book and I hope that you love it too. The Seed of Compassion, Lessons from the Life and Teachings of His Holiness, the Dalai Lama, by His Holiness, the Dalai Lama, illustrations by Bao Lu. I was born in Taktsur, in the Amdo province of northeastern Tibet. It was a place of tall mountains, clear streams, blue skies, and many animals. Mastiffs, sheep, horses, yaks, scorpions, chickens, and cows. Our home was in the shadow of the Amichuri, the mountain that pierces the sky. Mine was a family of farmers. My father would spend the day tending to and selling horses, and I would stay home with my mother and help with her daily work. We would plant barley, buckwheat, and potatoes, but those were not the only seeds we planted. From the time I was very young, my mother planted in me the seed of compassion by the example she set. She raised me on a diet of love. It was often my job to collect the eggs from our hens. I took my duty very seriously. While my mother cooked, the aroma of cori, a delicious bread, wafting from our kitchen, I would play in the courtyard with scorpions for company. Sometimes I would sit on the roof of our house. It was the perfect place to watch the mountains reach toward the sky. I'd imagine what the older boys were doing as they accompanied their fathers herding. I couldn't wait to be big enough to do that. My other favorite perch was atop my mother's shoulders. From there, I felt like one of the older boys. I was taller than my father and getting around was so easy. When I wanted to go left, I would simply tug on my mother's left ear. When I wanted to go right, I would give her right ear a pull. And if she didn't understand my instructions or chose to ignore them, I would kick, kick, kick my legs. Although my mother could not teach me to read or write, I learned so much from her. I was often a naughty boy, but she always treated me with kindness. 
Sometimes I think she may have been a little too patient with me. I was a bit spoiled. But that was her nature. She was this way with everyone around her. One year when there was a famine in our region and many families did not have enough to eat, my mother gave whatever food we had stored to our neighbors and those in need. In this way, she tended the seed of that most important lesson by demonstrating how to practice compassion. She showed me as a child that it was possible to treat all people with warm heartedness and to help ease their suffering. Like a tall tree never forgets the seed it sprouted from. I've often returned to the seed of compassion my mother planted and which I carried with me as a small child at home, as a young monk in training, and today as I spread the message of compassion around the world. I loved growing up under the big open sky in Taktsur, but I always knew that my life would take me beyond my small village. When I was almost three, some monks came from the capital, Lhasa, looking for the child who was the reincarnation of the Dalai Lama, the spiritual leader of the Tibetan Buddhists. They had been searching all over the country for him, and the millions of people of Tibet had been waiting to hear that he had been found. No one in my family could have expected that I was that child, least of all me. But after passing a series of tests where I correctly identified the belongings of the previous Dalai Lama and held them with a great sense of familiarity, our visitors were satisfied that they had found the boy they were looking for. And so, at age four, I made the journey to Lhasa in a caravan that snaked through the mountains. It took three months, and as news spread that the new Dalai Lama had been found, more and more people joined the procession. I rode in a beautiful palanquin with my brother. We were rambunctious boys, and every time we roughhoused inside the cozy cabin, we would knock it off balance. We had to be separated for the rest of the journey. In Lhasa, after I turned six, my formal education began and my days were filled with studies. In the few hours I had for personal time, I loved to puzzle over how things worked. I could spend hours taking apart toys, clocks, and watches and putting them back together again or exploring the mechanics of movie projectors and cars. This occasionally got me in trouble. As I trained to be a monk, I studied many subjects like Buddhist philosophy and history, logic and reasoning, metaphysics, poetry, medicine, Tibetan, and Sanskrit. One topic that I loved was compassion because of the seed that had been planted by my mother. I believe that is what led me to free the people held in the prison next to Potala Palace where I lived. I have spent my entire life studying this topic and I know it is my duty to help make the world a more compassionate place. The remarkable thing is, this ability is within every one of us and it is strongest, I believe, within children, like you. Many Buddhist teachings compare those on the journey of life to sprouts or the young shoots of a plant that must be tended until they grow strong and thrive. Parents often describe their children as sprouts too, especially when they see how quickly they grow. But children are like sprouts, not just physically, but in how they contain potential that can be nourished. The seed of compassion is within every child. It is there from birth and is a part of our nature. And it flourishes because of love. If you think about it, when it comes to the five basic senses, we humans are not all that impressive. 
The elephant has a long nose and can pick up faint scents from much greater distances than we can. The hare can turn his tall ears forward and backward to pick up sounds that we would miss. The eagle has eyes that can spot the tiniest prey from far up in the sky. It's not the use of our senses that makes us special. But only humans have the ability, with discipline and effort, to train the mind. It is what makes us different from all other animals. It is our superpower, and it is where the seed of compassion thrives. Think about this. When you are playing in the schoolyard and a group welcomes you with a smile, do you want to play with them? Or do you want to play with someone who greets you with a scowl? Of course you want to play with someone who welcomes you with a genuine smile, as you already have the ability to see genuine compassion in others. From self-confidence grows compassion, and from compassion, strength blooms. But so often our world puts importance on material things and pushes us to be competitive with the people around us. The material world is based only in the five basic senses. Compassion is based in the mind, the part of us that is uniquely human. It is where you might grow strongest and how you can create something positive in the world. Because compassion is not a sign of weakness, it is a sign of strength. When you approach someone with true warm heartedness, they can feel it. Doing so only brings more joy to you and them. There are many simple ways to bring more happiness to the world. But you already know that. What you must do now is protect and nurture this seed. When someone disagrees with you, rather than think they are mistaken, you must ask, why might they feel this way? When someone is scowling or upset or hurt, you could busy yourself with your own concerns or you could ask, what might I do to help them? These questions may not come immediately, but just as you gradually learn to read or swim or play an instrument, you can build compassion day by day. It takes practice, and even when you slip and don't make the compassionate choice, tomorrow presents the opportunity for you to try again. I have many responsibilities in my life, but helping to make the world a more compassionate place is the most important one. We cannot change the past, we can only learn from it. Otherwise, it is beyond our control. With the future, we can change. And as children, you already have the tools needed to build a happier world, a better world, a compassionate world. enjoyed hearing the story, The Seed of Compassion. There were a few reasons why I wanted to read this book to you. First, the Dalai Lama is one of my personal heroes. He has many of the qualities that I try to work on in myself. He's calm, he's patient, kind, generous. He thinks before he acts and before he speaks. And so even though I'm not a Buddhist, he is one of my role models and maybe he can be a role model for you too. The second reason I wanted to share this book is because I think compassion is an important quality all the time, but especially in the world right now. The third reason I wanted to share this book right now is because the Dalai Lama's birthday was on July 6th. So happy belated birthday to the Dalai Lama. That's all I have for you today, but I will see you in my next video. Bye for now.